it's kind of been a, a work in pro progress. Um, this is my attempt to take 2,000 pages of wide applications, to design schematics, invoices, and put it into a single chart. Okay, so here's where we are with our facilities and um, our major projects. So over here, here's the finance section. So we have the $4.3 million that was in the school bond. 300,000 set aside for Hallowell decommissioning, none of which is eligible for any kind of reimbursement from the, uh, from, from the state. We have $4 million uh, for the right approved projects, and then there's another $2 million uh, for additional right approved projects. Now, this comes from the school department fund balance. So, it's $6 million that where it is part of this initial investment. The NSCS edition uh, started, ended, and was completed, and the whole thing was done in a five month period. All right, the total cost was $3.1 million. The science labs were essentially done in a six month period. Uh, we're still not there with the total cost because one of the, the uh, uh, part of the timetable is that when a project is done, there's a final accounting of all, all the remaining invoices and then uh, RIDE will come down and certify the project as being complete and finished. So we're looking at a $2.3 million estimate for renovation of eight rooms at the high school. So that includes the two new science labs plus the old science labs plus where the old, old science labs were to have them converted into regular classroom space. And then we have, uh, we're going off for RFP shortly on the boys and girls locker rooms. And that we're anticipating that the completion for that project will be done start in the spring and be done in the summer. But we also have a whole series of warm safe dry uh, uh, deficiencies within our buildings that were identified by engineers uh, through the Jacobs report. And from a timetable standpoint, and this is where we're at. We have, we have some monies coming back to us as a pay-as-you-go program. So we've had about $200,000, $300,000 reimbursed to us from the Department of Ed. There's a lot more coming back, and that's where it starts getting a little bit complicated in the timetable. So we've had our weekly, bi-weekly meetings. We've had our monthly meetings uh, where the state has come out to inspect our projects, to take a look at our invoice, to make sure, you know, we purchased this. It says here in the invoice, we purchased that. Now show it to me. There it is. Uh, so they verified everything. Um, project completion. Uh, RIDE will do an on-site inspection and certification. In July, this July, we file a F-101 housing aid form, uh, and at which point RIDE will tell us what bonuses we've qualified for. So we don't know what our reimbursement rate is at this stage. We are at a minimum 35% for, for North Smithfield. I'm anticipating we will get, for NSES, there'll be an extra 5% added on because it falls under the category of newer and fewer. Uh, I am anticipating the science labs will get an extra 5% because it also qualifies as STEM, and maybe another 5% under Warm Safe Drive. Because while we were updating those labs, we replaced windows, we replaced ventilation systems, we replaced other things that qualify under the category of one safe drive. So once we get that, we will get um, payouts will come twice a year. All right, so we still have to wait for our big reimbursements to come back, uh, say around September, November, and again uh, later on in the year. That money will be reimbursed back to this revolving fund, which is uh, uh, sitting at the town right now. It has some funds in it, some reimbursements we've already received, the pay-as-you-go reimbursements. Monies that are in here 
can be further invested into Warm Safe Drive, which are then eligible for reimbursements, which go back to the revolving fund, which then can be reinvested into further Warm Safe Drive. So what we're looking at is uh, one of the things you'll see in the capital budget later on, uh, one of our requests is just to put some money into that revolving fund to keep topping it off every year because uh, we actually have, we're approved for $8.3 million worth of work for which we're eligible to be reimbursed. Uh, and my caution is, is that if after the NSCS edition, after the locker rooms, after the science labs, if we don't make a good faith effort on knocking off these warm safe dry projects, that in a few years, which by the way, next year I'm going to have to start doing a new, uh, new application for the next five year um, necessity of construction, that um, we won't be eligible for the next round unless we make good on this round. All right, so that, that's why it's important because while we're eligible to be reimbursed, while there are additional incentives where we could go to 45, 40, 45% reimbursement rate, it behooves us to take advantage of this and keep reinvesting and getting money back. Uh, because if we don't do it, if we don't make that good faith effort on this, um, you know, we'll be shut off in the next round. The next round, I'm concerned about because in the next five year cycle, that's when we have to start replacing roofs. And I'd really like to be replacing roofs with a, uh, a, a re, uh, reimbursement company. And then the last piece of the facilities to actually see some of this work on uh, February 3rd before the town council meeting, we're having a public showing of our science labs in the renovated spaces. So we've sent, I'm, I'm going to repost this on, on Facebook. We've sent out invitations, but we'll, we will send out a reminder. Originally, we were going to have this in the first uh, Monday of January. However, our teachers didn't feel the labs were ready. They were physically done, but they wanted to move in, set them up, and, and so they asked for us to hold off on the open house. So. So it's set for Monday before the town council meeting, 5.30, a brief welcome, and then we'll take you through and it will show you all the amazing new spaces that we have. Great, thank you. Any questions? Uh, the legislative changes? And you, you do have the, uh, uh, the slide deck for this. I am going to hit each page very quickly. I will then uh, put it up on the website afterwards. All right, so the changes uh, at the state. So the Board of Education is going to be uh, in charge of statewide standards, identifying high quality curriculum, and evaluating each school. All right, so that's that star rating system that we have. The school committees, it's removing authority from you because, you know what, not all school committees are like you guys. All right, so there, there, there are other school committees that, that apparently need a little bit more guidance, uh, you know, control. So, uh, so the authority that's removed is to give advice on consent and appointments. And again, I put on here, the biggest impact is in districts in which school committees heavily inject personal influences on uh, hiring decisions. Uh, so the school committee is you know, primarily uh, a policy and a budgetary body. Superintendents, apparently uh, I've been taken, uh, uh, the control and care of facilities is now no longer under my purview according to the legislation. Not to say that I'm still not still going to be involved. I mean, we still need district coordination and, and such. Uh, the appointments don't come through you, they now come through me, all right? Uh, you can at any time fire me, all right? You can fire family. Can fire a, a, a solicitor if we have it. That's that's pretty much the school committee 
um, controls the superintendent, uh, the the clerk, and, a solic and the solicitor. I didn't make this up. Jim. <laughs> Show you why. <laughs> and whereas the superintendent loses, uh, uh, is it doesn't is it the ultimate authority of the facilities? Discipline now falls to the superintendent's office. Not to say the schools and the principals aren't involved in discipline, because let, let, let me tell you, when we met, our principals met, and we were going over uh, various workshops and looking at the new policies and the new regulations. All of us were saying, no, we already do that. So it really is, it, it doesn't change much for North Smithfield because this is how we, we've been pretty much operating. Um, so question? Yes. Just because it, I remember seeing that, it says it changes to be responsible for discipline in the school system to oversee right. the discipline. So what does that even really mean? Your interpretation is as good as ours right now. Try to ask me. All right. <laughs> Which again, our district, it, it, and I wouldn't say it's just just because of our small size. I think it, 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 it's it's the culture we have and the quality of our administrators. We're always in communication. We're always on the same page. We're always sharing ideas. We're always, you know, trying to move forward. Um, you know, I'm not here dictating how things should be. I may set a goal or a direction, and if somebody has the best way to get there, that's it. That's what we do. So, you know, it, it, it is a very uh, um, uh, collaborative uh, environment that we have here. So, so under uh, the new regs, uh, you know, it's the superintendent is responsible for uh, hiring uh, school administrators, whether they're principals or they're administrators in the non-academic areas, for example, facilities, uh, uh, technology, for example. Uh, it's never been my intention, and, and, and I'm, I'm happy you actually put that clause in there, that, you know, the new person we hire is certainly going to come and meet and greet and, you know, be a part of the, uh, the community, and, um, you know, it, it would, just won't show up to work without you realizing it. So, uh, the principals get more authority. So there are things that are taken away from the superintendent and moved on to the principal. So the principals are indeed the CEOs and the managers of their individual schools. Uh, they're subject to the uh, supervision and direction of the superintendent. However, it is their buildings. And, but again, they, they don't run this building as a dictatorship. It is done in conjunction with partnership from teachers, you know, so it's the voice of the teachers, the employees, the staff, even the students, you know, that are going to help set the culture and the direction of the building. Uh, there is a in, increase in one of the uh, uh, policies we have, lays out the, the new powers uh, uh, of, the, of the school improvement teams. They have a lot more authority in say, working with the principal, and, and that includes students and community members. So uh, the the teach the, the principals are responsible for the overall uh, evaluation of the staff and performance reviews. They also prepare the, the budgets for the school. Now and, and again, I was surprised because there were there, there are a number of communities in which the individual school principal has no say or authority over the budget. They're just told by central administration. Here's the budget, here's what you're doing, you have no choice. So, but we never ran it this way in the first place. They have, you know, we may put some limits, you know, when it comes to budgeting time because of, well, you know, money. Um, but we don't dictate to the principals how that fund, how the fund should be allocated within their buildings. And there was a couple of policy changes. So there's the school improvement team policy, there's the hiring policy. Uh, yeah, I think you, you, we, we've had the school crisis team policy. You have not seen the human capital policy yet. That's still in development. And again, we're, we're working with Ben's office uh, um, to, to uh, align these policies with the legislation and the, and the communities around us.
Does anybody have any questions? So, and then uh, item E, you just did the. So, I'm just going to show you D for a second. In order to make the policies more approachable that we have. So right now we have probably about 500 PDFs spread out across the website. Um, we've started bundling these all into a single manual that will be available online, that's indexable, that's searchable. You know, so you have your table of contents, you click on it, it jumps you to the part of the policy that, that applies. And so we're going through, and, and one of the things that Sherry did before she um, sought freedom and blue skies uh, somewhere else, uh, she started going through and highlighting things that have really fallen out of date that should be revised. And so we have a number of highlights, a number of revisions, uh, but eventually, ultimately, we're going to have all of these policies available in a single document that's searchable, indexable, easily accessible, uh, and we're working on that. So item E, the appointments, and again, this will be a part of every agenda, and you know, we have, uh, we hired uh, uh, three coaches, their names are listed on the agenda, but I do have a resignation, and I want to just call out Erin Huntley in the pupil personnel office. She's been with us for a long time. She's just lovely and marvelous and intelligent, and she's always done more than a, her .6 position has entailed. Uh, however, she has resigned and is moving on to a full-time position elsewhere, and we certainly wish her all the luck and wish we could find a way, shape, form to, to keep her with us. The nicest letters of resignation ever. Yes. Yeah, yeah she, she's truly a, a wonderful person, so. Do you have any questions? Okay, let's move on to old business. Uh, fiscal year 20 uh, operating capital budget. This has a budget. Fixed costs and you know that fixed 
fixed increases and uh, just to you know, keep the quality we have. And I echo uh, what Budget Chair Commission, Chairperson uh, Charest just said, is that it's about maintaining, we're competing with the students, so we want to maintain the high quality that we have in school. And that's what this budget is trying to do. Discussion, recommendations, or changes? I just had two thoughts, which was, um, I don't know if you've looked around. I mean, I went through the whole thing, and I noticed that the athletics budget is, is more than high school budget and more than the middle school and elementary school budget combined. And we're not servicing the amount of athletics that we offer. And so I'm just curious to know where that compares to other districts across the state. This is a common issue where high school budgets. And so my second question becomes, if you look at the new legislation, it says that the principal is responsible for athletic coaches. So as, as the, the principal of the high school is putting together the budget going forward, how do you balance that when you've got kids that are struggling in math and you need to like that? I'm not sure how that plays out down the road, so I'm just kind of curious what you think about that. So that will always be those difficult decisions because the only way to draw down the athletics budget is to uh, draw down the number of teams and opportunities that we offer. Uh, or the athletics budget remains the same, but we increase the high school budget. You know, so it's, it, it, it is one of these cost balance things. Uh, you know, we have a turf field that needs to be replaced. That's big money. You know, that money could be invested in other 